Are you looking for a way to be able to fade your audio in OBS using a stream deck with minimal effort? G'day, welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. Today's tutorial was a suggestion put forward by a fellow Aussie streamer by the name of Eerie the Ghoul. Eerie plays a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2 roleplay, and he was looking for a way to be able to fade his game audio and his music, depending on whether he was engaging in roleplay or just riding around the countryside. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a couple of different methods of setting up some faders to be able to fade that sound in OBS, and also ways to be able to automate this so that you can adjust things with a single click of a button, allowing you to focus more on gaming and less on settings. Let's get started. Let's start off with a little bit of housekeeping. Let's create a folder. So we're not gonna chew up all that real estate on our Stream Deck. We're gonna give it a nice little icon so we can easily identify what it is. Now we're gonna open that folder. The first method we're gonna do is we're gonna be setting faders up so that we're adjusting the volume of what our viewers hear. For this, we need the OBS Studio plugin. I'm pretty sure that's a default thing with Stream Deck. If it's not, click on the application button at the top and go and choose the OBS Studio by Elgato. Make sure that's installed. We're gonna expand that out and we're going to grab Audio Mixer. We're gonna drag it onto one of our buttons. We're gonna set it to adjust. We're gonna select our source. Now let's also take a moment to realize how important it is to correctly label all of our sources in OBS. We don't wanna just see audio input one, audio input two, and so on. To do this, click on the three ellipses next to each one of your devices, choose rename, and name them appropriately. We're gonna make sure this is set to a positive value, and we're gonna select the icon style as fader vertical. Now we're gonna go and drag another one to the button directly below it, Set it to adjust once again. We're gonna select that same source. We're gonna set it to fader vertical and make sure this is set to a negative value. Now we've got this lovely looking animated volume, which as you can see, slides the volume up and down nice and neatly over in OBS. Now we're gonna add another one for our game audio. We're gonna go and drop that in. We're gonna select adjust. We're gonna select for me, that's my desktop audio, fader vertical, positive, and adjust source desktop audio, fader vertical, and set that to a negative value. Now we can go and adjust our volumes individually. So say if we've got a cool track on that we wanna rock out to, but we wanna turn down our game sound, we wanna turn up our audio. Now that requires me pressing and holding buttons, which if I'm in the middle of a game can be a little bit annoying. So let's automate this process. We're gonna go up to multi-action. We're gonna drag a multi-action button. We're gonna call this one Game Down. We're gonna go back to our audio mixer. We're gonna drag that in. I'm gonna title this as Game Down. I'm gonna set it to adjust, source, desktop audio, and I'm gonna set that to a negative value. Now I'm gonna go and hit Control C and then Control V, and I'm just gonna paste that in a bunch of times. So now if we go back to our desktop there, I'm gonna click on that game down button and we can see that it's turned my game audio down. But what about if I wanna do both Spotify and my game sound? Well, easy. Go and click on this little arrow in our multi-function button. Go and drag in an audio mixer. We're gonna label this one as Spotify up. We're gonna set it to adjust. We're gonna select that source as Spotify and a positive value. Now, once again, control C, we can just go and paste those in on every second one of these. Just have a quick look over just to make sure that you haven't doubled up on any of these. Game down, Spotify up, game down, Spotify up. Yep, that looks good to me. We're gonna go back, and now I'm gonna hit that button and that should increase Spotify and desktop value. Now, if you wanna change the speed at what these happen at, Maybe that was happening a little bit too fast. Might be, might be a little bit abrupt for you. Let's go back into our multi-action button and we can choose delay and we can go and throw a delay in between each one of these and we can set that value to anything we want. So we could say 200 millisecond. And we can go and throw that in between each one of these. So now we've got things in triples. We can go back to our main screen there and I'm just gonna adjust those so we can See that happen. So pressing the button, nice and slowly fading those two. 
You can set those values to anything you want. And of course, if you want this to happen in reverse, obviously just go and create yourself another multi-action button and do exactly the same. What about if you wanna be able to change the volume globally so that it adjusts the volume for yourself and for your viewers? Now, depending on the application and depending on what sort of audio devices you're using is gonna really alter how this works. If you're using something like a Go XLR or a Elgato Wave, you can use their software and integrate that through plugins in here. Now, I don't have either of those devices, so I like to use a plugin called Wind Tools by Bar Raiders. Go ahead and click on the app button at the top here, type in Wind Tools and make sure you install this one. Expand it out and we're gonna go down to audio, oh, excuse me, we're gonna to go to app volume set. We're gonna drag that onto one of our buttons we're gonna scroll down, we're gonna choose specific application, and I'm gonna choose Chrome for this one. So say I'm playing YouTube music or a YouTube video, we're gonna go and click the show volume on key and show app name on key. Now I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna set the volume that I want this to be. So for this one, I want YouTube to be at maximum. I'm gonna click on the fade the above volume. I'm gonna scroll down just that little bit more and we're gonna go and set the delay that which we want this to happen. So we're gonna set that at about 3000 millisecond. We're gonna go and copy this and we're gonna go and paste it. And I'm gonna set the minimum volume that I want. So let's say 33%. We've already got our fade settings already in there because we copy and pasted. Now, if I go and click on that button, we can see that Chrome is gonna adjust up to 100% in our sound mixer and we saw that volume go on to the button here. Now I'm gonna click the lower button and we can see it's gonna slowly fade down to 30%. Now out of good housekeeping, let's go and hit a volume plus and a volume minus button on those so we can see which one's doing what. Now for applications like Spotify, this gets a little more tricky. I would have thought initially if we go into the system function and add a hotkey, Looking over at Spotify, there is default hotkeys, control up and control down to adjust our volumes. However, as we can see here, this only works while we've got Spotify selected. As soon as we minimize Spotify or if we click off of Spotify, that hotkey doesn't function. So Elgato need to be able to update this so that you can select which application you wanna target that hotkey at. But don't worry. Bar Raiders have come to the party with this one with a nice little plugin. Go to your applications button, search up Spotify and make sure you go and install the Spotify by Bar Raiders application. If we go and expand that out, this does unfortunately take a little bit to set up. Uh, there's a little bit of syncing. I'll do another video on how to do that properly because it is a little bit of a process, but that's content for another video. We can go and use the volume up and volume down keys. And there's options there to display the volume on the key. So by going and pressing those, you need to have music playing for this to function. We can see that volume going up and down over here. Now it is a little bit delayed because it runs through a web server. But same again, we have the option to add a multi-action button, scrolling down to our volume up. For this one, we do need to add delay. As I said, it is a little bit janky because it runs through a web server but we can go and control C, control V to go and add multiples of. And if we minimize that, clicking the button, we should see our volume going up incrementally as a bit of a fade. So obviously setting those values within the multi-action button to a lower volume will make things a little bit smoother so it's not jumping up by tens. Well, I hope this has given you guys some insight and I hope it's given you some food for thought as to how you can automate a lot of this sort of stuff to be able to make your stream that little bit more aesthetically pleasing when you're listening to your music. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to the channel for more tutorials on this topic.